Mm, yeah, it's a, it's a bit late. Um, I would have put this up a lot, lot sooner, but um, just a combination of sleeping through an alarm and being punished by powers unknown for it. Apparently, they've got the right to punish people that uh, sleep through alarms. Couldn't tell you why or how much sense that actually makes. Couldn't tell you how much sense Monday Night Raw made this week either. That was pretty useless. But anyhow, um, it's ten. It's ten o'clock at night, and I need to record this. And so I've got a couple of hours to burn. I have to go after some roaming beasts. I have to go after another beast. They all have a catch rate of three, and I've got to smash this out within about two hours. So this might take a while. Yeah, I'm doing this because I'm undecided about which Kanto gym I'm going after to complete my first set of eight. Um, so, why not go after legendaries? I have grinded my team up to level 35, so they should be able to withstand stuff that uh, Suicune throws at it when I do encounter it. Uh, Anta and Raikou aren't going to be doing anything because I'm just going to try lobbing a ball at them whenever I find them and then just, uh, uh, just move on from there. Although, to be realistic, I'd say it's probably better off if I actually put Slumbork up front and put them to sleep. The only problem, however, is that there's the rare occasion where they can actually just flee just immediately, or then, then there's just, you know, hypnosis missing, so that's probably going to be obnoxious. I'll see how that goes down anyway, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm out here on Route 36 because we head up here, we can say hello to Suicune, and then it can run away once again, and uh, for some reason it just yeah has social awkwardness. Also, I think it's stood on top of this guy, and yet he's still very much alive. So, uh, yeah, that guy's just wearing, like, body armor made of Kachin or some shit like that. So, who knows. Anyhow, um, now that that's out of the way, we've got to show off the next port of call that we would normally be going through if we were doing this in order. Uh, next up, we'd be going into the Ecritique Dance Theater and taking out the Kimono Girls. I've already done that, and I've already got the Clear Bell, so... The next port of call would be up here to this house, which will eventually lead us to Tin Tower. We've got to fight three friggin' monks first to, like, pass a test. But, um, I'm going to go after the Romers first, just sort of get them out of the way, because I know they're going to be incredibly obnoxious, given that, um, A, they can be, well, I, why the hell did I go into the poker gear, first off? Um, you could do that in, I'd... Uh, the remakes, but you can't do it here. You gotta go all the way down to the bottom of the Pokedex and look them up here. Okay, so if I go south, um, I might be able to get Raikou to show up here. Are you gonna be a pal? Okay, yeah, he's gonna be a pal. Alright, so that's one of the reasons why it's gonna be obnoxious because that's not always going to work out. The other problem as well, um, this isn't the problem, mind you, but I do want to put a Super Repel up. Because I history has shown me that if you don't put a Repel up, you're probably not going to run into the Roma before it buggers off. Because I've had a lot I had a lot of occasions where I mean I won't lie, I'll just I just save stated before walking into the grass and just kept reloading the state until I encountered Raiko, or Entei for that matter. Um But yeah, the second reason for this, there's actually three now that I think about it. Second reason for this is because I mean, besides hypnosis, on occasion, it can just uh, bugger off on you. Is I'll try to show off an example of this. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it can't really be a speed tie because Raikou should very well outspeed a slow-ass freaking hypno. But whatever. This is why I'm not really relying too much on the sleeping strategy. Which sucks because, as I found out in a segment, a an attempt at the segment just before that I scrapped... Um, in Generation 2, if you inflict a status on a Roma, that status will not be retained when you encounter it again. So I tried putting Thunder Wave on a Raichu and paralyzing the both of them so that I wouldn't have to keep inflicting status. They got rid of the paralysis by the time they were encountered next. It was stupid, but um, that's just kind of what we have to deal with. Um, so, anyhow, I went and bought 50 Ultra Balls, 30 Fast Balls. Hopefully the fastballs will actually work with these roamers. They are intended to flee, so that should uh, raise the correct flag so that the fastballs have a times four catch rate on them. So we're just going to go ahead and lob a ball here. And the plan here is basically if I don't catch it here, then I'm just going to off screen until I eventually do. So obviously not a great deal of success was met there. 
anyhow, might as well uh, show myself encountering Entei at least once on screen, just so that, uh, for the sake of completion, I guess. It's on Route 36, though, which is going to be obnoxious as all hell. That thing goes on Route 37, I will be sad. Nope, that's, that, that's some other route. That might not actually be too terrible. I've just got to hopefully get lucky and not be sitting here 20 minutes later still trying to get the Entei to show up on one of these two routes because that would be really, really sad. I'm already five minutes into this segment. I don't even know if I would consider this having fun, but apparently it is blowing through a lot of my time. Oh well. This is just the sort of crap that we have to put up with when we're encountering roamers. It's not been much easier in... It hasn't been made much easier in future in, in future installments of video games. As a matter of fact, in the first four Generation 3 games, i.e. not Emerald, uh, roamers ju would just show up with IVs set to pretty much all zeros, which was pretty terrible. And um, you actually got to encounter one of these three beasts as a roamer in Fire Red and Leaf Green, depending on which version, uh, which starter you got. And if they... If you try to lock them up into battle, they've actually packed, they're actually packing raw. And if they use that, then they actually disappear from the map for good and you can never find them again. So, very, very flawed mechanic. Um, it was eventually phased out as of... It di well, it didn't, it, it didn't exist in Gen 6, it, in um, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire at all. It did exist in X and Y, but you basically just had to run into the Roma like 10 times before I bug it off someplace else where you could just encounter it in a regular battle and, and catch it. So, I'm glad that that got phased out. I'm not too sure if they will reintroduce such a feature if they made like Gen 4 remakes or something like that. I hope to bloody god that they do not do that because that would just be nothing short of terrible. And I was hoping that by the end of this little conversation I just had with myself and I that um, Entei would be showing up here, but uh, no, I think it, it... The problem with going back and forth between routes is that the beasts can sometimes go back and forth between two different routes of their own, which is obnoxious. Here, though, if I go down to the... Fuck off, Todd. I got rid of Youngster Joey's phone number, actually, because I... It seems that the um, vitamin thing that you get off them is only a one-off. I have not got a single... HP up from him since just that getting that first one off screen so I just got rid of his phone number we'll go and get it back once I get 16 badges or get close to getting 16 badges and then I can show that sort of thing off but uh, Todd can just sort of fuck off for the time being because this Entei is being a complete dipshit okay so he's on the right route now and at least at this point I can let me check where my save states are at. There's Ryko there. There's this. Yeah, okay, I'll roll over the top of this one. So yeah, as you can imagine, I'm just showing this sort of thing off just for... Just to establish. Yeah, you keep running into wild stuff, so... Um, just to make it a little bit slightly more legitimate on screen, I'm going to go with the Super Repel and hopefully run into it as is. I think there was like a guide somewhere that I wrote up that said um, if you can't find it in one patch of grass, try looking in another patch. I don't really understand why they thought that that was a thing. I guess this is when the internet was still very much young and obviously these sorts of ideas were sort of... It was the time of urban myths and lots of people just claiming that the mist stone is a thing and all that sort of just random crap and it's just... It was just that time period. You could probably just say whatever crap you wanted and people would probably believe it just because they couldn't prove with... Like, they couldn't, couldn't prove with any sort of definitive evidence that that was the case or not. Obviously, nowadays, people are cracking open games and reading the internal data like it's freaking a Harry Potter book or something like that. So, obviously, a lot of those things can actually be debunked. Like the uh, idea that you could turn a berry juice into a rare candy you, by just having it hold, held by a shuckle. So, anyhow, I have encountered both of the beasts once, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to stop the, this, I'm going to stop this part of the recording as it's approaching 10 minutes, start a fresh recording, 
and then probably form the rest of the segment off of that. I'm probably just going to have a whole bunch of sped up stuff and eventually uh, slow down once I actually catch the beasts in question. I don't know how long this is going to take. This is probably going to be obnoxious. I may end up being really pissed off by it and just end up safe stating to get them in the ball. I don't want to have to do that, but uh, we'll see what happens. So I will we'll be back in X amount of time. Place your bets on what X actually equals. Well, that's one down. Um, I, 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 get, I guess I didn't have a great deal of patience because I got to the point where you might have actually noticed in this attempt that I, it's you can sometimes actually get an attack in before they flee, but then sometimes they flee before you can attack. I actually can't even remember if I explained this earlier in the segment or not. Whatever. Um... At least now I know that I've explained that that's a bit of a thing that can happen, and uh, I did kind of cheese it a bit, but whatever. That's uh, one beast out of the way. God, I, I, I really wish I could just inflict paralysis and go after them just one ball at a time. Although, to be fair, that has actually shown to be quite effective. I mean, if they attack me, they're probably not knocking me out, because Slumbork's pretty tanky like that, so... I guess to his credit, it's not too bad. So that's one out of the way. Now I just got to go and grab uh, Raikou. I'm going to stop recording here and then uh, do, start up on another recording momentarily. So uh, I'll cut back once that uh, is a thing. was far more obnoxious than it had much of a right to be. Um, it, yeah, you can understand how pissed off I was just by the fact that I reloaded state whenever it auto ran on me. And for some reason, I just, like, I got the hypnosis to hit because it I took slightly longer to input the command than I did before. I, I don't know how the RNG works in this game, but... I seem to have uh, worked it out to my benefit. So I've got Raikou. No, I'm not nicknaming it. Piss off. That thing was an asshole. It uh, made me pretty salt because, like, my attempts to record, like, this little bit of 
video, like showing me capturing the Raikou. Uh, the first attempt failed because I put up a rappel and ended up running through the entire grass patch, running out of the rappel and not even finding the Raikou once. The second one failed because I reckon I triggered the auto run maybe 39 times in a row and then by the time I actually managed to see it actually, you know, try to use hypnosis, I safe stayed it over it because I wasn't paying any attention. Third time, third failure was the same as the first. And then fourth one was, I think, sort of somewhat similar, just being completely Fargo, and then I got that. So, yeah, I kind of cheesed these legendaries, but they were pissing me off. The mechanics of these were far more obnoxious than they had even any remote right to be. So, let's uh go ahead and have a look at these things in the box. Yeah, I had to fill up to our uh, box nine, because I actually do have another haul from yesterday to show off here so uh those are decided yeah those are though the speed yeah, well the special stats fine but the speed sucks and this one yeah not much better so yeah it, the, neither of these are decidedly that great in terms of EV, in ivs but uh, let's have a look at the rest of the haul um first and foremost is a golem I grinded my team up to level 35 in Victory Road, and on my way out found this, so I'm like, well, no reason not to grab it now, I guess, so I picked it up, picked up a Quillfish on Route 32, because I remembered I could do that now with the Super Rod, and then from the Power Plant, picked up Electabuzz and Lekid, both at night, Jolteon during the daytime, and Raichu can be found at any time of the day. I still have not found Pichu yet. I imagine I can probably find it during the morning, if I had to guess. Unfortunately, I slept the entire morning because I slept through my alarm, so I didn't have any opportunity to go after Pichu. So that is still out an outstanding Pokemon that I have yet to catch. But uh, I'm not going to worry about it right now because I still have one more Legendary Beast to go after and 50 Ultra Balls in which to capture it. So I've got that as well as three random bald schmucks to knock over. So, uh... Yeah, I like how this guy likes to sidestep and say, no, no, you're not allowed in. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, there goes the stupid repel. Right, um, do I want to save state now? Yes, I will. Save state in slot three. Because I'm not too sure if I'm going to get bombarded by them as soon as I walk in, but... No, here they are. I think they all have... Noctowl plus I think an evolution or something like that. I can't remember uh, Advent forward sounds like a decent enough lead, so I'll give it. I'll give him a shot Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right All right, what do you got? Gaku Sangaku I, I can't not make the uh, reference there. Also, level 40. I was not expecting you to have level 40s. That's a bit obnoxious. Although, to be fair, if I wanted to go after Celebi now, I would have to fight a team of level 40s in that as well. Unless I got the 8th gym badge, in which case I should be able to skip over that. I still have the option to do that battle at any point if I want to. Um, but if I don't have the 8th badge, then I have to do the battle, so... Actually, no. Once I capture a legend, then that uh, lets me progress with the plot as well, without having to um, without having to do a battle. So that's also pretty good. So yeah, figured they'd have the evolutions here. So Larion can just kind of just get drowned. The thing that occurs to me is that there's an Eevee Pokemon card somewhere and the way it's designed, like the way the artwork is designed, makes it look a hell of a lot like Flareon. It's just got that long sort of bushy tail, that, I don't know, tuft of hair on its head or something like that, and it just looks very much like a Flareon, except maybe a bit more brown than usual. i got to try to find an image of said card to show off here somewhere, I'll just like splice it in somewhere. So, apparently it was a good card back when it was printed as well, because like if you had multiple of them on your board, you could 
evolve one Pokemon and then its Pokemon power let you evolve it as well at the same time. And then, of course, if you had three of them on the board, they could just, like... I think the Pokemon power was literally called Chain Reaction, which actually makes sense because you evolve something and then you evolve an Eevee, then you evolve another Eevee, and then you evolve another Eevee, and it just sort of links them all together. And it actually made an Eeveelution deck pretty good. I can't remember which um, Eeveelutions were used in that deck. I think it was like Umbreon and maybe Flareon, I think. Maybe, I'm not too sure. It was just this um, like blog or something like that. I was reading up somewhere on like all the Pokemon TCG formats. It was pretty interesting. The only parts I read up were about though were stuff like the Rocket On format and just before that as well which uh, had just a whole bunch of degeneracy in the form of a Jigglypuff card that could hit for 40 damage with one energy attachment, which at that point in the game meant that with like a couple of plus powers, you were hitting 60 HP and could knock out pretty much any basic in the game. And you could attack on the first turn of the game back then as well. So you could basically just say, no, no, you're not allowed to turn. I win, but I'm supposed to get a turn. It's only fair game. No, no, no more fair game. I win. Just screw you. No turns for you, which is pretty sad. I think the author of the vlog mentioned that um, with the release of, I think, like, the Gym Challenge set, the atmosphere at their local, like, Pokemon tournament went from just, like, a generally sort of positive one to just a really tense one because apparently the format was just that bad at the time that if you lost the coin toss and had to go second, it was likely that you were just going to just flat out auto lose because of stuff like Chaos Gym, which basically said you have to flip a coin every time you play a trainer, and if you get a Tails, then you don't get the ability, but your opponent can choose to take it for themselves. So, that's pretty obnoxious. I'm certainly glad I didn't play Pokemon TCG back then. That would have killed my interest in it a lot fucking quicker than Link Summons did for Yu-Gi-Oh, I'll tell you that much. Now, this thing has double kick, and I believe it will knock me out in one hit unless I get quick claw hacks off here. And I did get the quick claw hacks off. That's cool. Mm. So yeah, that was the old... You, you might have missed it from there. The old name of the uh, burn tower was the brass tower. And the other one is the Tin Tower. So, just named after some random uh, kind of metal. Although in late, although in the remakes, the Tin Tower was renamed the Bell Tower, so it would just completely ruin the whole thing. I imagine there might have been something in the lore that said it was called the Tin Tower at one point, unless they just completely struck that from that uh, universe, I guess. But, um, seems a bit dumb to me to have done that. I think the only time that Reflect has actually come in handy for any of those guys has been the guy I just knocked over with the Jolteon. A pack. Level 40 and you have pack. If this was Gen 1, then you might have been able to get away with it, but... Not in this generation. Sweet Jesus, no. Noctel is more of a special attacker anyway. You should be bloody focusing on... If you're going to focus on any sort of offensive like physical offense on that thing then give it bloody takedown like the other one did that actually did a decent amount of damage why the hell do you have peck that was pathetic <laughs> so yeah reflect not going to be quite as effective here and again i for some reason i have this annoying habit of misclicking and using fire punch particularly against water pokemon like, against some other Pokemon, it's fine because I think of just a different name or, like, a different move. But, no, in this particular case, I must always misclick and go Fire Punch. Also, this Vaporeon just knocked me out without taking any damage because I got flinch hatched. Go fuck yourself, game. As you might expect, not in the best mood. Because it's nearly 11 o'clock and I still have to sift through a bunch of footage and, um... Obviously, at this stage, there is no way in hell I'm going to be doing a gym at this point, so... I don't know why I don't just uh, speed up, keep throwing strength at this thing, and I hope it doesn't have just recover or some shit. I also would not mind uh, that Aurora Beam not reducing my attack, because it can actually do that. 
All right. This segment seems kind of... Eh. It, it seems kind of just lacking in quality. I guess it's just because of the Romans being obnoxious and me having to just cheese my way out of them, but I don't know. I don't feel particularly great about this segment. It doesn't actually do much wrong, to be fair, but I don't know. I shouldn't really be admitting this because this is still almost certainly going to be going up on YouTube anyway, but... Um, Given what uh, that thing just did, yeah, given what uh, those guys did to me, it's probably best if I leave and heal. Thankfully, Suicune's not just gonna do a runner on me. So, at least I'm... At least I can just do that and sort of save state, and if I, if I fail, then I fail. Whatever. I'll probably just... If I fail on my first attempt, I will just cut back once I've caught it, so... I believe I want to save state in slot 3 here. I need to work out who my lead is going to be. Slumbork sounds like the best choice for a lead. Nice and tanky. Got the uh, super effective move. As well as the sleep inducing move. So he makes uh, some kind of logical sense. Question now is, is there going to be... Looks like there's going to be a cutscene of some variety. Usain walks in, but the battle begins before he even has the right to say... Or even decides to say anything at all. So, uh... Bit of a, uh... Screw you to that, I guess. I guess, to be fair, you seen was pretty much just the butt of every joke when it came to the Suicune event in previous games, so... I guess that's just the, uh, cherry on top of the shit Sunday for him. Because he's about to see another trainer just catch Suicune and take his dream away from him. And the trainer didn't even actively go after Suicune. I guess, I, I guess this is just the mind of the actual trainer itself, if they even had one. Of course, I was going to go after Suicune, but I'm just like... I'm the main character. Everything good happens to me. I found a fucking shiny in this playthrough. Not a whole lot of other people have, can claim to have that. Besides, you know, trainers and stuff like that that have been implemented into this uh, hack by the developer himself. But that's sort of excusable, because that's just a different thing he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Anyhow, I was going to put this thing to sleep, but Thunder Punch, upon bringing Suicune to the red, has in fact paralyzed. Let's save state in slot 4, see if I can weaken it a little bit further with Fire Punch. Every little bit of increase in the RNG will benefit me greatly. Jesus! That did literally nothing to Suicune. Okay. Psychic with Stab. Okay, yeah, did not expect that to, uh, live there. Mm, I suppose I might as well go into Sting or I can't put the thing to sleep, so... Okay, that works. I don't think I can push it down any further. Maybe Fury Cutter. Maybe Fury Cutter. Let's see what Fury Cutter can do. Sweet, that'll do, mate. Alright, 50 Ultra Balls. Let's get going. Can't use Fast Balls, because this isn't a fleeing Pokemon. And immediately break out. This is why I wanted to get the Sleep Status in, as opposed to the Paralysis, because I'd be more... It, it will help the Catch Formula more. And I actually do believe, now that I think about it, before anybody actually does bring this up, in, uh... Old, in the old Gen 2 games, st some statuses didn't actually apply anything to the catch rate calculator. Uh, those have been fixed for this hack. So the paralysis is adding towards the catch rate calculator. Sleep will add just more to the catch rate calculator, which is why I would rather have had the sleep over the um, over the paralysis. So, yeah, th th those have been covered. The, the hacker knows what he's doing. I believe that's three immediate breakouts in a row. This thing has one HP and is proud paralyzed. Although, to be fair, Pokemon in this game in general have been really obnoxious to get in the ball. Like, I've even noticed that in Jish's Crystal LP. Like, Pokemon such as Raticate have just been really obnoxious and refusing to go inside a Pokeball. It's 
It's got to be something to do with the Gen 2 mechanics just seeming to, seemingly favoring the wild Pokemon more, I guess. Maybe there's just some kind of fundamental chain difference in the uh, catch rate formula that I guess just benefits the wild Pokemon more. Because I swear this isn't as hard to do in later generations. I mean, Gen 3, it's debatable, because I know I had some really problematic um, legendaries that I couldn't catch with even Ultra Balls in Gen 3. And to an extent, Gen 4, like, the Pixies were absolute assholes. But, like, I guess in those cases, it's somewhat understandable, considering they have a catch rate of 3, and Ultra Balls only have a times 2 catch rate. That's what made Fast Balls so powerful against the Beasts, is that those were a times four, I'd be a bit more likely to catch them. And as uh, the recordings show, I did eventually nab them in 13 balls total. So I'm not too sure what else I'm going to do with the uh, fast balls that I've got on me. They might not be bad balls to just put any like shiny runners that I run into. If I ever run into a like a shiny Quagsire or something that can run away, I might a fastball at it just so it doesn't take me a hundred years to catch the damn thing and having to constantly reset whenever it runs away particularly in quag size case it's one of those um 50 percent shots at running away so geez that's some terrible shit oh shit i I forgot that thing had a water move. Kind of, I was doing so well, and then I, and then the thing decided to inconveniently remind me that yes, it has a water move. So screw you. Okay, twelfth ball. Got it. Okay. Just as I was starting to speed up and hopefully uh, blow through some more time, that's uh the cue for Suicune to go inside the ball. So. That is all three of the legendary beasts. There is Usain, depressed as always. And uh, having captured the Suicune in this, we can actually go after pretty much all the other legendaries in the game. Um, obviously the Zapdos, Articuna, Moltres have already been triggered. Uh, is it up there? I, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm not too sure if there's any other triggers that you can... Oh my god, here we go. Here, here he is. Yeah. Told ya. He was depressed. And Camper Todd ringing me, I think for the second time in this segment, I think. <laughs> So yeah, I don't think there is a... I think that's about it for Usain. He just sort of hates me now for catching Suicune and ruining his dream. But I'm pretty sure he can go after her -Oh now. So, that's kind of cool, I guess. I can go after Mewtwo and Mew now as well. Um, I think I got to go down into Cinnabar Mansion someplace to trigger Mew as a um, Roma. I'm not too sure about Mewtwo, though, what else I've got to do to trigger the Mewtwo event, but... The birds I can go and get whenever. Um, and so I guess that just leaves Celebi, which does involve an event with the whole, like, shrine and stuff like that. And since I now have a Legendary, I don't have to engage in any other, uh, like, Pokemon battles, besides, you know, obviously finding and capturing um, Celebi. Because otherwise, I'd actually have to fight Professor Oak. And I actually tried that off-screen just to see what his levels were. His lead was a level 40 Eevee. So, if I wanted to go and battle him now, I could probably beat him. I imagine he's only got Eeveelutions on his team. I could probably get over those, especially considering I knocked over a set of Eeveelutions just before to get to Suicune. So, that might not be a terrible thing to go after. But uh, for the time being, I'm pretty... I'm decidedly kind of happy with how the segment's gone down, really. I mean, I said it didn't really feel like it turned out all that well, but I guess I was comparing it to the previous segment, which I thought went pretty well. So, um, not too sure what I'm going to do next time. I will, I guess, just start somewhere and uh, let the wind take me somewhere. So, 
I will uh, see you next time. <laughs> Wish me luck in uh, all that post-production editing and shit they got to do now. <laughs>